Hello, welcome to another edition of Attic Annotations. I'm your host, Jefferson Oakwood. Today we're going to be talking about Arizona's models for English language learning programs. Now before we get into the watercolor, I'd like to uh, square away some terminology. When I use the phrase EL, I'm talking about an English learner, ELL, English language learner. Anybody whose first language is in English and needs some extra support uh, to do well in school. Um, and of course that's going to be a huge range of people with different proficiencies. So there's been a lot of debate about how to go about these folks' education. Um, in Arizona, recently they have adopted a four principles uh, model approach um, after lots of back and forth and such. So I'm going to get into that model, that's the watercolor, and let's see where it goes. Okay, plan B, our props people have not watercolored in time, so we're not dry. So let's take a look here. So I've put numbers in front of each of these principles because that's how Arizona has numbered them. but as you can see I've changed the order a bit because I wanted to highlight that the asset based asset basedness is really the all encompassing ethos of this approach without pointing out the strengths of students um, everything else is sort of secondary. Um, in the middle we've put uh, targeted instruct I'm sorry, what did we put in the middle? Integrated instruction, because that's sort of the uh, the crux of things. We're doing the instruction in the classrooms for the most part with non-EL peers and accommodating as necessary to really immerse students in the language and use that content area language and learn that in the subjects. Um, and then as needed different students need more or less we have targeted English targeted uh, yeah English instruction and then on the third ring we've got assessment pre-assessment post-assessment ongoing assessment anything all the kind of testing that helps us determine the best placement for a student um, because there are different levels, which we'll, we'll get into in just a moment. Um, and I wanted to position these two targeted and integrated next to each other because there's a constant flux here. These are happening at the same time. Uh, the, the English, targeted English instruction is happening within the context of the integrated uh, within the context of the subject areas um, and many lessons and um, accommodated uh, handouts, whatever it may be. So um, these two things are always in a kind of back and forth and the assessment is also in flux here. So as a student progresses their assessment may change their placement and so on. Okay, so let's take a minute to talk about some of these placements and programs that Arizona now has as options as opposed to a one-size-fits-all ESL program. So ESL, anything English as a second language, could mean a lot of things. Uh, bilingual, uh, the instruction is being done in two languages in our country, most often Spanish and English. Um, and the uh, sheltered English instruction, we have ELL students possibly from different language backgrounds all in one room um, receiving English instruction through content uh, areas. And structured English immersion, that's the biggest one we want to talk about, is English happening, English learning happening um, through immersion in uh, other classrooms to various time uh, time degrees and such. So we've got 
Um, newcomers, that's the most intensive level. You get two hours of ELD, which stands for English Language Development, so just focusing on learning the language, not worrying as much about all the content areas, and then two hours of uh, learning the language in an integrated way in content areas of social studies, science, etc. Pull out, uh, similar but less extent, less uh, intensive, one hour English language development, um, one hour integrated. Two hour program gets two hours of English language development in their day. And 5050 Dual Language gets 30 minutes of English language development and then 90 minutes in a classroom of uh, bilingual, bilingually taught. So this is lots of options, seeing what works best for different students and different schools, communities, as opposed to just everybody does four hours of, ELL, of ESL education. So we're in an experimental era and Let's keep talking about it. Uh, I would be misleading to give the idea that we're just doing willy-nilly experimentation. There are some important standards and guidelines that have been put out, uh, including the Home Language Survey and the English Language Proficiency Assessment, which there are accommodations for students who don't have much English to be able to take the test. Um, those are so we have some standardized ways of placing students and then within that back and forth instruction I was talking about of how much to do in targeted language and how much to uh, scaffold things we have something called the English language proficiency standards right there in my notes scribbled illegibly um, but these are uh, guidelines for how to adapt the academic language in each subject uh, for different levels of students of proficiency. So that's very a very helpful guideline for doing this work of uh, educating ELL students in um, you know regular classes. Uh, so much, so much to get into, but I think what we're really going to focus on is coming back and circling back to the watercolor. Because a point that I'd like to make um, about that asset based stuff. So let me get cutesy and then we'll, we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are back at our four principles and we're highlighting our outer ring our asset based asset based behaviors and expectations so being a bilingual is truly an asset and rather than just focusing on these deficits that our assessments point out we're talking about balancing that attitude with um, some positive things about our situation. So we painted our outer ring yellow like the sun and just like the sun these asset based behaviors are going to produce some nice little sun rays boom boom uh, yellow is the best we could do I know the sun's not really yellow but it is in my painting in our diagram so anyway what uh, I wanted to finally touch on is how what we're really gearing towards is seeing student agency so students sort of taking charge of their own lives and academic and study decisions and everything else and learning and that's a particular challenge when you don't know the language so um, at each stage of the each of these principles asset based behaviors assessment target the target instruction the uh, Arizona principles have listed different indicators of student agency and so um, we don't need to list them all but we're gonna just name one for each of these four things 
and you know further our diagram okay you ready we've got this little sunshine ray saying reinforce growth mindset don't get caught up on those mistakes. Uh, encourage independent learning by teaching strategies for learning language and content. So, lead a teach a fish to fish, and it'll wait. You know the you know the saying. Take a his horse to water. Some you. Ah, I need to learn my idioms and go back to language school. Encourage initiative. And let's see. Ah, help EL students develop habit of self-reflection using various formative assessments. So that's our assessment ring. Instead of it being the bad guy, see if we can start flipping that into an asset-based mindset and make our assessments work for us. I think that's all the time we have for today, tonight. But it's been a blast sharing our diagrams and sticky notes with all of you folks out there in the world. Until next time, keep it educated.